In this video, we're going to look at division of radicals. Uh, what we're going to assume is we're going to assume that all variables represent positive real numbers. Before we get to division of radicals, I just want to review what it means for a radical to be completely simplified. Actually, I should say a radical expression. A radical expression is completely simplified when, in this first rule we should already know, that's why I already wrote it, um, when there's no perfect powers of the index left under the radical. So that's the first rule. But there are actually two more rules about radical expressions. The second one is that we never leave fractions under the radical. So no fractions. I'm going to say no fractional radicands. And so there's a few different things that we can do for this. Um, one thing that we're allowed to do is we, just like how we can combine and, and take apart multiple uh, radical or factors under the radical that are being multiplied, we can do the same thing with division. So if we have the square root of a over b, we could rewrite it as the square root of a over the square root of b. And vice versa, if we had two radicals, one in the numerator and one in the denominator, as long as they have the same index, we can merge the two radicands into one fraction, if that helps. If it doesn't help, then don't do that. And the third rule about radical expressions is that we say the denominator must be twice. And what that means is we cannot have any radicals left in the denominator. We're not going to look at that necessarily. Uh, we're we're going to look at some tricks for that now. Um, but in the next video, we're going to talk about other strategies for rationalizing the denominator. So the third thing is that um, it's simplified when the denominator is rationalized. And that's basically just a fancy way of saying there's no radicals in the denominator. No radicals in the denominator. OK, so let's look at some examples using one technique for simplifying uh, fractional radicands. In our first example, we have the square root of 64x to the sixth over y squared. In this case, we can't simplify the numerator with the denominator. They don't have any common factors. So what I would probably do is write this as two separate radicals, 64x to the sixth over the square root of y squared. And then just simplify each one separately. So uh, 64 is a perfect square, and its root is 8. x to the sixth is a perfect square, and its root is x to the third. And in the denominator, the square root of y squared is y. So in this case, we got rid of all the radicals. Um, and that would be our final simplified expression. In letter B, we have the square root of 121 times t to the 14th over 36 times k to the 8th. In this case, 121 and 36 do not have any common factors besides 1, so we can't simplify those. And then t and k are not the same variable. So again, I would probably split this up into 2. I'd rewrite the numerator as 121 times t to the 14th, the square root of that. And then in the denominator, the square root of 36k to the 8th. And then we're going to simplify, uh, take the square root of what we can take the square root of. So the square root of 121 is 11. The square root of t to the 14th is t to the 7th. And in the denominator, the square root of 36 is 6. And the square, uh, square root of k to the 8th is k to the 4th. And this would be our completely simplified expression for letter b. Over here, looking at letter c, we have the cubed root of 54x to the 7th over x squared times y to the 6th. OK, so the first thing I notice is that both the numerator and the denominator have a factor of x. So I want to simplify that first and foremost. Um, there are seven factors of x in the numerator. There are two in the denominator. That indicates to me that there are five factors more in the numerator. So we would have x to the fifth in the numerator over y to the sixth. Now I'm going to split up the two. So I'm going to rewrite the numerator is the cubed root of 54x to the fifth, being very careful that I bring that index of 3 with me. If you change it to a square root, you're changing the problem. And then this would be the cubed root of y to the sixth. OK, I want to clean up the numerator as much as I can. 54 is not a perfect cube, but it does have a perfect cube factor of 27. So I can think about, well, I'm just going to go ahead and pull that out. So 54 is 27 times 2, and the cubed root of 27 is 3. So I'm going to pull out a 3. And then I'll do my cubed root of 2 would be stuck under the radical. I left a little gap here because I need to simplify x to the fifth x to the fifth has a perfect cube factor, and it would be x cubed. So we can think of x to the fifth as x cubed times x squared. We can take the cubed root of x cubed, it would be x itself, 
and x squared is going to be stuck under the radical. X cubed, uh, x squared is not a perfect cube. Okay, so that's the numerator, 3x times the cubed root of 2x squared. In the denominator, the cubed root of y to the 6, that would be y to the 6 over 3, that would be y squared. And that would be the totally simplified answer for letter C.